Hello, I'm Dr Elizabeth Morrow. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you in person at the conference today. I'm currently on maternity leave at my home in Killyleigh in Northern Ireland. I'm delighted to be invited by Professor Fiona Ross and Helen Gorham at the Leadership Foundation for Higher Education to be part of this important conversation about leadership, research and impact. The motivation for the study that I'm going to talk about today was to help universities think through issues of research impact. We set out to get a conceptual handle on research impact and to get practical advice for researchers and universities. Research impact is becoming more and more important for many reasons. Research impact is about finding ways to generate and spread evidence. It is about making sure that evidence is there to inform the most important decisions that we face in society. It is also about ensuring academic research has a presence on a global stage and in our daily lives. It's about better communication and collaboration between researchers and research users and also about equipping researchers with the right types of skills and opportunities to do well. These are some of the issues that I was asked to look at in my research. Clearly there are many important reasons to try to maximise the impact of our research. All of the major research funders are talking about pathways to impact. In this study we tried to pinpoint exactly what universities and researchers can do to build their own diverse routes to impact, not only at project level but across departments and universities. The data for the study came from the experiences of academic researchers themselves. We looked carefully at the impact case studies that were submitted to the 2014 Research Excellent Framework Assessment. For the first time, REF took into consideration the impact of academic research. Universities were asked to write case studies about the impact of their research beyond academia. The resulting database of over 6,000 impact case studies has given us a remarkable opportunity to study higher education research. In this study, we analysed a sample of 1,309 case studies from 134 different universities. We aim to explore the nature and scope of leadership, governance and management research, routes to impact and ways to evidence and assess impact. We selected case studies that related to any aspect of leadership, governance or management research. The case studies included research on higher education and other diverse areas too, such as the police, armed forces, business and industry, health and social care, tourism and sports science. Our analysis gives us a really good insight into the extent of this multidisciplinary field and the types of impact that are being achieved. We looked for patterns in what researchers said about their route to research impact. We found out about the spread of impact through publications, presentations, conferences and events. We read about mechanisms for impact including researchers' advisory roles, web-based information resources and staff exchange. We've synthesised all this information to generate key learning points from it. I will talk through five of these points now to give you a flavour of the findings. The first learning point is about the types of impact we found. When we examined the data, we found that impact tended to fall into four main categories. The majority of case studies reported on type 1 impact, the use of research evidence. For example, to influence law, policy or guidelines for practice. The second type of impact was the use of research products, such as training programmes or toolkits. Some case studies were able to show type 3 impact, the effects on individuals. For example, changes in awareness or understanding. Other case studies describe the effect on groups or organisations. Researchers have managed to find sophisticated ways to tease out the contribution of research to change within complex social and organisational contexts, including over a hundred different measures. For example, when we looked at the impact of higher education sector, we found improvements in leadership skills and behaviours, equality and diversity in leadership roles, coordination and leadership capacity development, management development, change management, organisational improvement and innovative research methods. Now that we have this robust source of information, it's a really good time to think more strategically about the impact of leadership, governance and management research. Going forward, understanding the process and mechanisms that support impact is the key to building pathways to impact. The second learning point is about the push of research impact. When we looked at the processes involved, 
we found researchers had often spent decades building knowledge and expertise that gave them a recognised authoritative voice. This gave them the ability to disseminate or push research out to wider audiences, for example through speaking at conferences or through the media. Researchers say that they extend the reach of their research by informing collaborations. They build networks of expertise and communication channels that spread findings to much wider audiences and research partners internationally. Partnerships and collaborations with industry and public sector partners feature strongly in these case studies. Researchers have also operated as knowledge brokers and boundary spanners, helping to disseminate messages arising from the research directly to research users. Push factors are clearly important for generating research impact, but what we also found was that the most experienced researchers made use of the conditions that surround their research. Our third learning point is that by taking time to examine the research context, researchers can identify the pull factors that can give them contextual leverage. We found that successful researchers look for favourable conditions for collaboration. They piggyback their research onto political or professional agendas. Or they might try to make a strong link to existing strategies or plans for change that will carry their research and make it the solution to known problems. Savvy researchers identify priority areas for research and make use of indicators of the scale of potential benefit or outcomes for beneficiaries to show the significance of the impact. Our fourth learning point is about tailoring impact. According to the experiences of researchers included in our sample, impact is enhanced when stakeholders and research users contribute their knowledge to research. Tailoring impact means you're asking the right questions in the right ways the leadership and developing foundation research will be outputs making the full that are fit for purpose. Available online to download. In the case studies, the research we looked at direct involvement of the public and end impact. users in research. It helped to gain backing for research outcomes, capture the lobbying power of user-led organisations and support access to user networks to spread research. We identified at least 20 different mechanisms for engaging non-academic groups in research. Mechanisms for exchange range from the use of one-off public events to longer-term involvement of peer researchers over several years. Different mechanisms tended to serve different functions, such as stimulating interest, perspective sharing, building knowledge, validating and spreading knowledge. Research organisations can use these findings to reflect on how they are engaging with stakeholders and the public. Researchers had used different processes to target impact. Some had used critical or action oriented research methods to intentionally change particular outcomes. In terms of impact planning, researchers reported identifying target audiences and research users to target objectives for impact and to plan opportunities to maximise impact. Other researchers predicted the types of benefit and beneficiaries of the research. Targeting impact also meant allocating resources for impact activities, such as time to co-design impactful research outputs with research users. Planning progressive or incremental impact through rollout or phases of the research. What emerges from this analysis of routes to impact is that multiple simultaneous processes contribute to research impact. There's a strong argument that we need to overcome the limitations of thinking in a linear way and reimagine research impact as a complex and adaptive system. Research impact is not only related to research and the actions of researchers, the conditions in which the research takes place and the process of interaction that researchers use are also crucial. The final point that I want to make is that researchers can make use of a framework that we've developed from these findings. The Adaptive Systems Framework, described in the full report, provides prompts and descriptive categories that can help researchers to consider a range of impacts that might be achieved through their research. It can help researchers to plan ahead and reflect on impact goals. The framework illustrates the interrelationships between research contexts impact processes and mechanisms for exchange. Showing these relationships opens up the complexity of leadership, governance and management research. Furthermore, if we think of research impact as being adaptive, it is then possible for us to see that we can shape the very meaning of research impact. 
Together as a research community, we can influence the terms by which we define and measure the impact of our work. The Leadership Foundation will be making the full report available online to download. The research will feed into essential conversations about research impact. I look forward to being part of that conversation.